Welcome to Wedding Day Podcast with your hosts, Sonia Babich, CEO of Iron Diamond Media, a leading wedding resource featuring seven localized wedding brands across the country, and Dan Riggs, photography and videography expert and founder of Summit Hill Studios. Come along as they travel from state to state to connect with the most creative and well-respected professionals in the wedding industry. Every episode will arm you with the hottest new trends, wedding day tips and details, and they'll show you all the joys of planning your perfect wedding day. Welcome to Wedding Day Podcast, Episode 1, powered by Continental Diamond, Linen Effects, and Warpaint International Beauty Agency. Today we're in Minneapolis at Living Room Studios, and our guest is Andrew Vick, who has celebrated over a thousand walks down the aisle with his happy couples. Today, Andrew's going to share with us what you can expect when working with your wedding photographer, how color and style can affect your finished images, and how your wedding day photography experiences can last with you beyond your big day, and a whole lot more. Hi, I'm Jenna Cully, owner of Linen Effects Minneapolis. I bet I can guess the third thing you did after getting engaged. Number one, you called family and friends to share the good news. Number two, you started a Pinterest board. Number three, you realized that you have no idea how to bring that Pinterest board to life. That's where we come in. Let the design experts at Linen Effects take your ideas and bring them into reality. We have everything, including floor length linens, charger plates, table settings, centerpieces, candles, pretty chairs, lounge furniture sets, and more to make your event picture perfect. Go to our website at linenfx.com to schedule your appointment today. That's linenfx.com and see your Pinterest board come to life. Cheers. Cheers to you. Oh, oh, cheers. Oh, cheers. Man. cheers. Who put that microphone there? I don't know. I, this is a new one. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Hey, I, I I just, I need to start off by just saying um, you're in our studio today and I've been really excited to have this. Uh, something that's been important to me in my journeys as a photographer is the concept of fika. And fika in, in Sweden means sharing a beverage with dear friends and setting aside time to get to know each other. And quite literally and figuratively, we get to Fika today. So cheers to you. Cheers to Fika. Cheers to Hopefully Fika. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly, said it, right? Fika. I Fika. knew when we had you on uh, the first episode that we would learn a lot. Yeah. And uh, learning Fika is the very first thing that, uh, <laughs> that we can all take away from that. Little Nordic roots, man. Oh, I love it. with the name Sonia. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right, I had to kind of start with a little Scandinavian yeah. and flair for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're in... Uh, uh, Minneapolis today. Yeah, and Minneapolis. Yeah, yay to Minneapolis. We're excited to be here mm. uh, in the living room studios mm-hmm. uh, of that one Andrew Vick. And we're super happy to have you on our first uh, episode, the pilot episode, I guess you would say. is a, It's historic, so it, thank you for being part of our history. Let's uh, drive the plane, guys. Let's go. Andrew, <laughs> let's, drive, let's go. So, so Andrew, uh, you grew up here in Minnesota, yeah, right? St. Right. P- St. Peter? Yeah, born born in St. Peter, where Gustavus is. Some people know it for other things. Uh, it was a <laughs> desolate land. Uh, and then we moved up here to the big scary city when I was in elementary school. Uh, but yeah, that's where it all began was, was taking pictures of stringers of fish on the boundary waters and mm-hmm. golf courses I was playing and, um, but, but we, uh, we, we went from there. So, well, going from there, what, what brought you here? What made you a photographer? <laughs> well, I, I got to go to school. I, I got to study photo and business in San Diego, California. And my earliest photos out there were photos of friends coming off the surf, off the waves, and uh, friends getting into agencies, modeling agencies. And so they were always looking for a new headshot. And I got to use pretty light. And obviously, sunset on, on the cliffs of the ocean is you can't beat it. It's, oh, it's gorgeous. Pretty there. unreal, yeah. As we know with California Wedding Day. <laughs> yes. yeah, absolutely, right? Yes. <laughs> so awesome. I got a little Cali uh, mixed in with the Minnesota thing, and it was choice to come back here. Uh, but I do give a lot of credit to my beginning to what I learned out in the uh, the West Coast and, and the openness and the transparency of, of uh, wedding professionals and friends I got to know in there. And I got to bring a bit of that here back here to the Midwest. You know, going off of that, um, being part of the seven brands, you really see that we all have something in common as wedding professionals. We're all the same. We all love mm-hmm. what we do mm-hmm. and we love making each day perfect. Right, mm-hmm. Andrew Bick? Perfect. 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 It, is, it is the uh, most <laughs> overused word in our industry. <laughs> it is. Are you sure? Amazing? Perfect. Amazing has to be... Uh, no, perfect. perfect? If number one, okay. if we were playing Family Feud, the number one pick would be... <laughs> 
Perfect. Okay. I would love to be on Family Feud for wedding terms. Oh, we would win. We, we would, would win. We would. <laughs> and, Andrew Vick was my wedding photographer, and that was that was not by mistake. I mean, you know, I okay. haven't even before we met, and I didn't know you then. Yeah. Um. So I chose you out of just sh- pure talent. Thank you. Um. Man. Yeah. No, Appreciate your work you. is your work is incredible. Um. And and it. As such, you do get to travel to all these cool places. Mm-hmm. So thank you for uh, mm-hmm. photographing Michelle and, and my wedding. Well, how I knew that was when I was scrolling the real wedding selections. <laughs> oh, in uh, Minnesota Bride Magazine? Yeah, for Minnesota Bride. I was like, yeah. oh, Andrew did Dan's wedding. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yes. It was great. Yeah, and we didn't know each other then. And so, no. you know, I think that's important to mention. Like, I chose yeah. you yeah. on just your talent. Thank I mean, you. you're so incredible. You, um, we still love looking at those photos. But, you know, mm-hmm. t- tell me about your travels. travels. I really want to know where you've been, um, what brought you there. Sure. I've been to Camrose Hill mm-hmm. all the way over to your wedding day. Yep. And still water. <laughs> and still water. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but when people ask, hey, do you travel? And they start asking about, like, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, we can, we can do that. <laughs> That's easy. Uh, I've documented weddings and events in 12 different countries uh, all over from Europe, uh, Italy, Germany, to the Caribbean, all over Mexico, Costa Rica, um, Guatemala. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I did say it'd probably be smart to have a family sometime. And whenever I can work out our back door and take care of Minneapolis and surrounding areas, you know, it's also, it's a, it's a big joy because you can go home in your own bed. You can be more present as a dad. I got mm-hmm. two little boys at home. Uh, and, and so with that, they love seeing a dad as much as we can. So, so with all these travels, of course, I would love to know your first wedding day. Oh man. Okay. Before I, the first wedding is 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 incredible. I, before I jump into that, probably my favorite travel story from from a wedding. I might just jump yeah, into that go first. For it. Yeah. Uh, so I got I got called uh, by Becca, and Becca said, Andrew, I bought one of your first ever photos at the Dinah Art Fair when you were just trying mm. to get your stuff out there. I had traveled the world and been photographing landscapes, and before I fell in love, that's when I started doing love uh, love stories and landscapes. And she said, I bought one of your very first pieces. And ironically, I, uh, and it's from Ireland. It's a beautiful castle. I knew the exact photo that she's talking about. Mm -hmm. And she said, 16 years later, I I found the person I'm going to marry. And his name is Donal. And he grew up about two miles from that castle that I've had on my wall for my whole life. And she said, I just thought it'd be super fitting for you to be able to continue telling our story uh, Mm -hmm. in that. And so we did it here locally in a, in a vineyard and Donald afterwards said, this was amazing. It's too bad. You can't photograph our Irish wedding. And I looked at him and I said, well, (laughs) why not? Why not? (laughs) Why not? So Donald schemed with me in a separate bank account to find a way to get me out there to photograph their Irish wedding. And Becca didn't see it coming. And the time that she knew that the day arrived, she's getting ready in the house and there's a knock on her door. I got picked up at the small little airport on the West coast of Ireland uh, in Killarney. And I, I said, hi, Becca. She goes, Andrew, what are you doing here? I said, well, we've set aside the whole day to celebrate you. And tomorrow we're going to go around the ring of Carrie and uh, we're going to get to celebrate again tomorrow. And wherever you guys had fallen in love, we're going to get to go. And so we did a whole day, day after session with them and Mm -hmm. some of my favorite memories of of some of my travels for it. I just, sometimes I feel, well, I know a lot of couples don't realize how like magic they make a relationship Mm. with their wedding photographer, Mm. Mm. you know, before, during and after that was one of the biggest wake up calls that I had on my wedding day. It's like, you're with me the whole time. All day long. The whole time. There's a lot of, there's a lot of time with that person. Yeah. And either they blend or they don't. I get asked often if I'm a cousin or how long we've known each other. Uh, and, and so I always see that as a compliment of saying, Hey, we've done a great job of, of, of blending into the mm-hmm. scene. And I, and I think one of the common questions I do get asked is like, is, is more better and whether that be bringing on a, a, a second photographer on the day. And, and I think to try to find the best fit for that, you know, either you, if you're going to add video and you're going to add photography and if you're going to add a second photographer, many times video crews come out with 
uh, one, two, three. And at times it might start sometimes feel like you're traveling with paparazzi. Mm -hmm. And the way I've traveled in, in the culture of the world, I've been able to access it by being just a very inquisitive and curious a uh, single person and you respond differently one-on-one and welcome them into culture differently one-on-one and you get more intimate photos. Uh, you get to be blended into the, the party a little bit more. And so uh, if you start looking at a wedding party at like 300 guests and you really want all those guests covered, you know, you can add a photo station or you can add a second photographer. I do love shooting with my team, but uh, I, I think you do. You spend a lot of time you with people. You spend a lot of time, a lot of time. And you just... And then you become best friends. Like you said, they yeah. invite you to sleep on the couch sometimes yeah. right after the wedding. I've slept on a couple of couches. <laughs> Is uh, this true? A true story? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just so like the lifestyle, like you said, even after the wedding, like yes. I still use my wedding photographer for my maternity photos yes. and now our family photos. Yes. So it's like you really create a special bond with yes. your wedding photographer. Yeah, It's it's a belief I have that uh, it's an old school mindset of saying, hey, we have, we have a photographer uh, in our family, a family photographer to document mm-hmm. our story from the roots up to the trunk to the branches and beyond. And so th- that's something that is a new ask that we're getting to see more and more in our photography community is people wanting to start the journey with you and then continue life and the journey with yeah. you and to be able to have art that matches the edit and the aesthetic and be able to build upon that, that their f- kids get to know you. Uh, still mm-hmm. to to this day, like I have, I have stories of like friends being so excited to get back together so I can meet their little one or their newborn one. I did a wedding for a couple in the Keys and I came over to photograph the newborn photos for their little son. Mm -hmm. And I walk in the door and the little girl greets me at the door and says, hi, I heard you helped write Mommy the Princess book. And I said, I just might have. (laughs) She goes, do you want to see it? I said, absolutely. Mm. So she grabs me by the hand and walks me over to her bunk bed, and the parents kind of follow suit, and she sits me down and pulls out this little book about like this big, and she starts narrating it. She opens it up and says, once upon a time, mommy became a princess in Key West, (laughs) (laughs) and married dad, the prince, in oh, Key West. I love this. And uh, she goes on to tell the story as she's kind of filled in the gaps. Meanwhile, the parents are poking around the side of the door with tears welling up in their eyes. And they look at me and they go, Andrew, we read this every night before we go to bed. Aww. And that's her book. And wow. so it's it, it's given me beautiful motivation to say, I want others to have that legacy and that experience for people. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's given me a little extra fire to say, we were going to do an album line. Let's do it really well. uh, And let's make sure it's, I have one and I love mine and I loved my parents too. Like going and looking at at your mom when she was beautiful on the, her most beautiful day. Like I'm like, I want to look like my mom on her wedding day Totally. and just seeing that love story and then continue to share your love story with your littles. Totally. I think it's so awesome. It's tangible. Voted Minnesota Bride's best jeweler every year since 2010. Continental Diamond has an amazing selection of diamonds, engagement rings, wedding bands, jewelry, and timepieces. Providing the best experience possible, their team is friendly, knowledgeable, and there to make the process fun and easy. Trust the reviews. They're top rated on Google. Visit Continental Diamond, the jewelry store Minnesota adores. Online at ContinentalDiamond.com. Are you asking if engagement photos are important, Sonia? They are important. Why are they important to you? Well, important. Because you've been through this. Well, you get to see how they capture you. Yeah. Like, you have to like how you look in your engagement photos, because if you look good in your engagement photos, you're going to look really good in your wedding photos. Totally. And also, as a photographer, you get to understand how the um, couple, like, how they picture, how they're captured. Yep. They may be darker under the eyes. They yep. may have hidden shadows on their faces or yes. a- what ang- angles Those. do they like? <laughs> yeah, feedback is important. I think I learned that early on in my, my, my days of studying where the business and the photo merge made me unique in the world. I really mm-hmm. viewed myself uh, in my art classes. People were saying, I'm this artist. I can't wait to profess to the world how great my expression is. Or I can't wait to show you what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. And... I started seeing life a little bit differently than everybody else in my class. I realized, why can't we see ourselves as commissioned artists? And at the core of what we do, we listen, we take feedback, and mm-hmm. then we create around someone else's story and yeah. vision and mission for that. Because then you can show up 
and you're you're just having fun with them. You are, you yeah. are. And in the engagement photo process, it is a very important process for people. Even if it's a sample session, we have something that we offer that's it's called our get acquainted session, mm-hmm. and it it fits everyone. And it's just time with Andrew instead of meeting with me or having a beverage or raising a glass of fika (laughs) that we get to go out for 20 minutes locally and laugh and play. And then I ask for their favorites in that gallery. And sometimes people come at the day saying, well, I know I love photojournalism. Oh, I really love portraiture, you know, and, and many times they come back and they pick all photos looking at the camera. So then I know as a creative to say on the day, I'm going to make sure that we ask for your eyes a little bit more. Just mm-hmm. so you have more of what you like. That's really right. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I and that's part of that commission art is like, great, the more feedback I can get to get it perfect. Perfect. <laughs> that's amazing. The, be- yeah. the better. <laughs> and it's awesome that you have that opportunity to perfect it. Yes. Yes. Right before the day. Hey, you asked earlier, like off camera, about like some trends I'm seeing. And I think experiences are really important for people. And this season we've been booking airline tickets to go out and fly to people and where they live mm-hmm. in wherever part of the United States. Mm-hmm. And so instead of booking two flights for them to come home, they realize it'd be easier to use miles or something to have me come out to Kansas City or uh, we've done Charleston. We've been out to San Diego and to say, hey, this is our life here. Our dog's here. We'd love to kind of introduce you to our favorite cafe, mm-hmm. our favorite experiences. And we know that we'll bond just by introducing you to our world for that. And so whether it be the cabin, um, we have a drive to you, the fly to you has been extra fun just to absorb into a different culture, but it's something that that I've seen kind of pick up on the trends or even a vacation that someone's on. Anything, anything. When people, you know, they're giving up a weekend. I hate to say it like that, but their guests are coming to celebrate this love story. Um, and they want to say, thank you that you're part of our lives. My grandpa called it happy money. Weddings are happy money because it's a way to say, thank you for being a part of my daughters, my sons, their love story. And I want to thank all my friends and family for supporting our life and our daughter's life or son's life. So, um, it's, they want to make sure it's a good time when they come and be proud of this life they made. So uh, <laughs> in, the, in the world of experiences, I've, I've got to, to uh, be able to photograph a couple pilots and one pilot, we came up with this concept of flying in with his groomsmen to Flying Cloud Airport and then driving across the street to Green Acres for his wedding venue. Mm-hmm. But she's waiting on the airstrip, flagging him down and he lands the plane and come out and there's this giant embrace. And mm-hmm. for them, they fly together and that's part of their story. And we thought, let's do a first look on the runway. Oh and my so God. It was awesome. Wow. It, it was awesome. Uh, I also got asked, uh, it, 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 and I've heard... A That's friend get crazy. married up, like they're pilots <laughs> at Sun Country, and they were able to get a flight up and want to do their vows up in the sky and then land for the reception mm-hmm. down below. Um, and so my, my favorite right now that we're working on with a couple is one, uh, two pilots got married at the Semple Mansion. And they said, well, we love to fly together. We always wanted to do something in the air. Mm-hmm. Why don't you come out for a one-year anniversary shoot to Oregon? And we'd love to go flying with you and see what you can create mm-hmm. uh, using some of our favorite passions and hobby for it. Too. And this is work. This is work, man. Like, this is your work? This, this is, is your job? This, my, my office oh, is not terrible. <laughs> wow. It's not and terrible. And it's like going like how we know these details is so um, to show like how much wedding professionals are a part of your story, yes. right? To, dreaming is important. Yeah, dreaming the whole nine yards to get to know each other so we can have fun with you on your wedding day. One of the, the tricks to our trade is we'll ask for, at least here at Vic Photography, we'll ask for people to submit images uh, that they're inspired by because I always kind of want to see what their eyes gravitating towards. Oh, it's for sure. And, and they their Pinterest board. Pinterest board, right? exactly. Yep. Right? Everybody's got a Pinterest board. And it's okay to share your Pinterest board to your wedding professionals. Yeah, that's what it's I'm getting It's completely fine. It's really great. I mean, I love it as feedback. And, and when I do see the images, like there's a couple things I have to kind of coach people through a little bit mm-hmm. uh, is number one, could that be on your wedding day? You have to ask yourself, could that be on your wedding day? Like so, ocean waves in Minnesota. Well, like I'm going to give you an example. Like I had one couple, like they flagged this gorgeous photo of this bride floating in a canoe at twilight oh. with candlelight and cascading petals behind her, like a wake oh. under a weeping willow Ooh, tree, la, la. Wow. under a weeping willow tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I just love this. And I said, well, you're getting married at the machine shop. 
<laughs> the nearest weeping willow is which about is downtown Minneapolis. Fifteen, yeah, fifteen <laughs> minutes away. Uh, the floral budget alone for this is probably three grand. Uh, the setup is probably another half day. And so, if you love the concept, you know, we can do that. Maybe just not on the wedding day itself, but maybe let's take that concept and say, do you just love how peaceful she is? Do you love the time of day that she's getting married? Yeah. And so, I, I, so number one is like, can this be an actual photo from your wedding day? And most people's boards, I find seventy to eighty percent of the stuff that they fly Legged or tagged or style shoots uh, yeah. or, right. or model sessions. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and so I, again, and style shoots setting are expectation. Yep. working with wedding professionals to create a new hot trend or theme that is, you know, the hot topic right now in the wedding industry. They're staged. Yeah, they're staged. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So usually they can have t- models in it or no models, sometimes just to show the details in a reception hall or whatever. So in the setting expectation, I think that is one thing that I think is really important for us to do. Right. And, and the second, the, the third thing I think that's really important in this journey is also to, to if an image is speaking to somebody, sometimes it's because of the edit that's applied to it. And I, I've been I, I, celebrating, I think we're, we're, we celebrate over a thousand weddings of people coming down the aisle. That's something wow. that I get to kind well, of do, right? congratulations. Thank you. For you. <laughs> so I've gotten to see some trends come and go. And an edit is one right now that is it's it's hot and it's important to understand what you're looking at in an image. And so either you're aware of the emotional content, the composition of the image, or sometimes people are really drawn to the like the look or style or feel of the edit. And we're purists in our camp here at Vic Photography, where we believe in full color, honest color, true color, punchy color, because you can never get back that if it's been um, an edit applied. So a couple edit styles that are coming through from the West Coast with some of those golden glow of California is that bronze look that right. is kind of making everything look a little tinted or a little bit orange or a little bit golden. Um, those two colors are really hard to get back after you get a full collection of that back, number one. The other one is a desaturated, almost like a uh, hung games inspired a little bit of coming from Seattle market and uh, you're seeing the greens almost becoming blue green and so you know it's also another one to kind of be aware of and the third is this blown out washed out very pastel look mm-hmm. and feel where it's uh, low contrast and everything's real whimsical and airy for that yeah and, and I'm sure you've seen that as yeah, you look and that's through a, images that's an that. uh, important thing to think about when you're selecting your photographer what is the tones that you gravitate to yep. right because if you're not those tones, Andrew Vic, like they're yeah. not, you're not the right photographer yeah. for them. And skin tones get altered and changed when you do apply a lot of that. So if you can tell an image has been filtered, uh, it, it it will date itself before the actual style in that. Right. And if you talk to any of your wedding planners, uh, floral uh, to linens, they say, please stay as true color as you possibly can, because this is the palette that you've chosen. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you if you pick jade as a, a color for the girl's dresses, mm-hmm. and, and a, if that palette gets augmented, it's going to look much more teal, Yeah, you know? And so I think well, all those things even are Even within the magazine, you can tell through the real weddings, what kind of style each photographer is with mm-hmm. each public, yeah. with each published wedding. Totally. So it's, um, this is a good educational tip to our mm-hmm. engaged couples to pay attention to the coloring. I have right? a question. So would you say that, um, because for me, the yeah. shots are very important, right? right? Mm-hmm. You're, oh, you're, yes. the, the style, your approach yeah. to taking great photos. Yeah is always going to be more important than whatever kind of a edit or preset or color that you put on Mm -hmm. there. So would you say that our couples maybe should be open to, even though you may not, you know, maybe the couple wasn't looking for true color from Vic Photography, Mm -hmm. they were looking for, you know, they were looking for a a different tone. We can make that, yeah, right? I see where you're going with that. Yeah, that's exactly. We, we've we custom made over uh, 350 presets in our, in our lab here so that if someone is inspired by a look, we can take their favorites. We can make it a, a certain social look for them or a, an aesthetic that, that matches. And so uh, many times you can come to them and ask, like at least for us, they can ask, uh, you know, here's an image I really love. I love the look of this. Could we do this whole series in black and white or this whole series in this desaturated look? We, I really love that. So it, it, I think it's a great thing to always ask of the capabilities of the studio. Also, like um, these teams, like your team, you have mm-hmm. editors, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes, like I would have just thought my photographer mm-hmm. was my yeah. editor. And sometimes that is the case. Yeah. So it's good to really know who's on board yes. when you pick yes, your photographer. Totally. Is my photographer being the editor or does he have a team? Yes. It's just it's just knowledge. I think it's knowledge. And it's also nice to know if you do have support system. If like I do get asked, you know, what if you're sick and what happens? So for us, it's very great important. Question. We 
kind of have a Avengers group. We, of we are people. real. <laughs> we are real. We get sick, right? Right. Well, we, and I've never had to do that. Knock on wood. Thank you. I'm not for you. <laughs> Thank you. In, in all of my time. Uh, but I also, it's, people are, they're very at peace knowing that I also have a speed dial with a team of mm -hmm. super high quality photographers that I have friends and also on my own staff and team too that and shoot just with me. So. Jumping off of that, if you have a very highly respected wedding photographer and they become ill and they're a one person show, they have a Rolodex. Yeah. Don't worry. They're going to take care of you. They know it's your wedding day. Can't mm -hmm. get rescheduled. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a Rolodex available if something happened to right. a solo team. Right. Because right? right. right. us wedding professionals are actually friends. Yes. We want everybody to be successful and have great experiences for their couples. So you need to know that there's a Rolodex if anything happened to any wedding professional on your wedding day. We all have each other's back. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I thought about when you were talking about teams is I'll get questions like, okay, well, if if you are going to shoot our day and someone else is going to edit it, is it going to look like what you have on your website for your samples, for all of that? And yeah. you, well, what's your answer to that? Uh, well, let me clarify that. I think there's, there's a number of days, too, that we will sit down with the aesthetic and the highlights. And so what I'll do is I'll get to still be very involved in picking the highlights for the day. Here's the direction that we would like to kind of see that day or that engagement shoot or even a corporate shoot. You know, some of the other pieces that we do of like, here's the look and the feel that either is being requested or, or what we want to do. For me, I see value in having a, um, you know, two different people people's perspectives to pick up on, wow, you know, for me, I'm a male photographer getting to go out there and, and photograph from that perspective. But then I also have, uh, I, I like to have other gender, other people's eyes on it to make sure that, Ooh, she's not gonna like that veil that way. Well, let's tuck that back behind the shoulder. And so by the time the final production comes, we've had mm -hmm. at least three sets of eyes looking over these photos and saying, yes, we feel like this is gold yeah. and we feel like they're going to feel absolutely their best in this. And so I see it as an asset uh, and I think that that's part of what you're getting at. I so. absolutely see it as an asset. Yeah. How do you feel you have, in the world of video, Dan? Yeah, I mean, you definitely have uh, this cohesive look, this mm -hmm. team who sits down, you know, mm -hmm. our team sits down, we sit at, um, mm -hmm. you know, this conference table and we watch taped and we're, you know, we roll mm -hmm. video of weddings mm -hmm. that we've filmed yeah. and mm -hmm. we look at them and we go, eh, maybe, you know, next time we could do something different like this. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a, it's a collaborative effort yeah. where we're all on the same page. The specialists are important in this industry. Mm -hmm. And I think... Uh, I always use it. Uh, my sister's a doctor and she goes, Andrew, you're like the creative specialist on the day. And I wouldn't send someone with a hand problem to a general doc. Like I want somebody who just knows this and does it the best. And so within our team, we do have areas of specialty, but we also love to collaborate together and be able to make it all come together uh, as beautifully as possible. And I think it's important for consistency in the work over the years uh, that, that things are delivered on time or early. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had seven years of, of beautiful delivery and, and if not early for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it's well, something you we're are, really proud well, of. I was going to say you are a business. We yeah. are all businesses, Thank right? You. And you have to know your brand and how you want to treat your team, your clients. Yes. and how you want to communicate to yeah. the world who you are, yes. right? Warpaint International Beauty Agency, a team of on-site, award-winning hair and makeup artisans that bring the beauty to you. On-site beauty whenever, wherever. They understand how valuable your time is and the importance of looking your best. Their team of vetted professionals design exquisite hairstyles and makeup applications for corporate, editorial, weddings, headshots, special occasions, and more. All in the comfort and convenience of the location you choose. Warpaint International, the ultimate symbol of luxury and excellence in hair and makeup artistry. Sonia, uh, do you know what wakes me up in the morning on a Saturday? And What wakes you up on a Saturday? Your kids? <laughs> Is it your two kids? It's besides my two kids, uh, <laughs> which I love them. And as you know, as a mom, mm -hmm. like every day there's sacrifice and we give up the best in Minnesota here. We give the best of Minnesota summers to mm -hmm. go out and surf. And we really, I really take to heart the uh, so heart true. on the shirt sleeve, we are in the service industry and I'm paid to care more than anybody on that day about any of the moments that happen. Because if 
once once the reality is is those people won't be all in the room together and mm-hmm. if someone gets sick or we lose somebody in that crew they're going to care 10 times more than i ever did mm-hmm. about about those photos and i mm-hmm. and i do know that i'm a heavy shooter rachel can attest to that <laughs> uh, i shoot about twice as much as anybody that i've i've met but i i love the action reaction i love having material to pull from i love it mm-hmm. i love having all the nuances the perspectives from the little flower girl down the aisle to the bride looking at her groom to the first row of guests to the auntie in the back row looking at things. Mm. Uh, And so I think, uh, I don't mind being the sweatiest on the day. I don't yeah. mind leaving my family. You usually are. I usually am. And I've mm-hmm. worked. I've worked with Andrew. He is extreme. No, he's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you, you're moving, and uh, your photographers are moving. They're trying yeah. to get all We're the doing it. all the all the the pictures in that lens. Totally. Right. My belief is something I see through the lens on that day will stitch someone back together on the hardest of days that they have together Mm -hmm. and make them believe they can go one more week together, one more month together, one more year. And it's like the mountaintops of our life are very few and far between. Mm -hmm. And that we have a guaranteed mountaintop peak on the wedding day. It's a kickoff party. The the Vic family secret is like, we love the kickoff party, but we can't wait to see the the impact you're going to have in the world going forward because we believe that love makes a difference in the world. My goodness. It's actually one of my favorite tips for uh, young photographers getting into the industry uh, is human touch really brings eyes alive. And so I'm always trying to get down at the table level at their perspective at a, at a dinner party and framing people off through glassware and sweaty glasses and, and the person who's toasting if they and then who's emoting to that toast. So you're getting the action, the reaction. But in the family portraiture, one of the best pieces that I love to give people uh, who are getting into the photography world is just allow touch to be a big part of the communication. It's not where you want them posed, because then that's posing and positioning, but how you want to feel. And so you look at them in the eyes, you're like, aren't you guys excited to be together as a family? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have you hold his hand like you guys are on a date. And I'll say that to a, uh, a couple that's married for 40 years. Mm. And we're like, you guys still date, right? And they go, oh yeah. I go, well, good. I can see it in your eyes. And yeah. what a great lesson you have to teach these guys right here. Sometimes they just need to be reminded. Yeah. Yes. Be reminded. Absolutely. Grandparents, I make grandparents kiss. Uh, I don't Aye. know the time I've ever seen my grandparents kiss. And so I get to like say, these are our gold on our day. Aww. And I'm like, you know what? A little smooch on the cheek. Or if I allow him on the lips, usually he comes back in for another and I joke about his ticker going a little bit and she starts <laughs> giggling. And the couple gets to see what 50, 60 years of living together mm-hmm. and in life looks like. Aww. And they have something to emulate. I have it now on record and we'll shoot through those moments and give them some of that gold for it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I have never heard a photographer speak the way that you speak. When you t- t- spoke to Michelle and I, um, we had our, I don't know what you would call it, like a, we hired you. We already hired you. You're right. already our guy. Right. And we right. had uh, like a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Um, you know, you asked us questions about us, yeah. things that we care about, things that, and I, I you know, I've never yeah. heard any other photographer yeah. do that. And yeah. it, you really got us to open up a little bit. Thanks, I mean, man. That was, well, I've been working really hard and, and it's intentionality on how we do relationships. And, and I think it's really important. I've learned it within this wedding community. And, and I feel like we enter into conversations uh, with usually thinking about the answer of what we want to say next. And it's been very important to me to create a space. Um, and I've been calling it kind of like, how do I discover my superhero power of curiosity? And it's it's a mantra. It's I kind of try to take it into my life. And so it's, it really starts at the table to hearing about people's stories for it. But I think the first question that we ask in conversation is polite. Mm-hmm. So if I ask, you know, how was your Thanksgiving? You know, that's a nice polite lead in, right? You mm-hmm. respond, you know, you know, hey, we had 20 people at the table. Well, great. Second question is I've labeled it authentic. And the second question, so I was like, great. Well, tell me about your grandma. Oh, my grandma, you know, and if I sit in that pocket, so that's the second question in a row. If I ask a third question about maybe a favorite relationship she's had or memory with the grandma, why that was extra impactful. We're starting to tap into the superhero power of curiosity. We're not getting there, but it's like JV level, right? Yeah. As soon as you hit that fourth question, it opens the door up for so much goodness mm-hmm. in the world. And uh, I do have a theory that if you hit five, six, seven questions and beyond and it doesn't come back your way, it, it's a bit of maybe what lawyers will do or there's an interrogation side of it, so you have to be careful. Yeah. But I think uh, it, 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 the smartest people in my life were really good question askers. Oh, I love that. And so, yeah, the first is polite, second is authentic, the third is tapping into that power, and the fourth is hitting your cape and, and being able to realize that there's something really special in the world. And 
and me going off of that is that your conversations are experiences, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was a beverage cart girl. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that was a good one, mm-hmm. but you can only talk about the weather so much. Yeah. Right. right. And that's being the polite, right. polite. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, guys, I'm going to give you curveballs. How's your round going? What's yeah. where, where, yeah. where are you at with your yeah. scorecard? Right. 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 Um, Cause it's, well, who wants to have a dead conversation? Right. So you got to have yeah. going back to yes. experiences. Yeah. Got to enjoy the people that you're working with on your wedding day. Yeah. And it's getting into the why. And I think you can hire the what, you know, people know what they do. They put together flowers. But when you kind of understand people's why, I think it's mm-hmm. it's general business practice across the board. Some of the most successful entrepreneurs and business owners I know really hone in into their why and mm-hmm. they know their why. And so it keeps you having fuel. So as a creative in this industry, it's easy, you know, to like, you know, go hard and not have, you know, fuel by the end of the season. And so for me, I just realized how important tapping in to motive, purpose, vision, um, and know the why that we get up every morning and, and having gratitude. You can tell an energy in a wedding room mm-hmm. when people are excited about this mm-hmm. couple getting married and they mm-hmm. want to celebrate their love story totally. loud and proud. I, um, I would, I would say that like, there's a, uh, a, there's a first look moment that I think people, uh, ask all the time, like, should we, are we candidates for a first look or aren't we? And I, and I think it, it speaks to the energy of, of the couple and even just where they draw their energy from. And, and so the majority of the people who choose a first look moment, um, it's traditionally like in a Catholic church, uh, earlier ceremony start time. Mm-hmm. And they've saved a lot of these traditions to this moment in this time. Yes. And that's important to them. And, yeah. and they have some time on the back end to be able to celebrate and get the photos that they need, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so I think there's, there's a give and take for it all. Uh, and then there's, there's a couple that like want that first look moment to build the day intentionally where I just want to see them. Then I want to add in my friends then I want to add in my family. And then I want to mm-hmm. leave the ceremony and go right into the party and not have it feel like we're pulled away from anything that I'm going to be missing out on anything. Right. And, and, and historically one, if not both couples tend to be a little more introverted then that first look moment is really important. I mm-hmm. think when we, when we have the, f- like, um, when we say, I want to have the first look at the altar that usually one, if not both are extroverted and a bit more in a traditional church. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and they also have an earlier start time for it, but uh, it's something that they've had in their head since they were a a little person and said, I can't wait for that day. Yeah. Okay. Going back to my wedding planning years, um, there's pauses and negatives to both of them. Um, if you're waiting till the ceremony, you are hiding the whole day hiding the whole day, Mm -hmm. right? You're staying away from your Mm -hmm. partner in crime who you're marrying. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes you're sitting in a closet for a long time. So you got to think about like, what do you picture your wedding day? Are you sitting there waiting for that two o'clock, four o'clock time? Or if you do that first glance, you can see them maybe at 10 or 11. Yeah. Yep. And have you get fun more time a with full your best day friends. together. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I tell. Oh. Ev- yeah, that's what I tell every one of my couples is. You know, you're going to be super nervous. You're going to be yeah. more nervous than you yeah. would if you see them earlier. Because yeah. really, it's that's your best buddy. Like once once you're together with that person, so stabilizing can, agent. You can conquer yes. the day yeah. together. Like yeah. right. And yeah, and you have that five ten minutes of just one on one time yeah. with your photographer, yeah. not knowing that they're yeah. there, but they're yeah. there capturing that yeah. lovey time or maybe yeah. private time. Yeah. But then you're like. Let's do this. Yeah. I'm right. Let's have a great day. Yeah. The couples and, and that I hear who wait to the altar to see each other, they love that. They love that they built up that moment. Totally. They do say that they lock eyes with the groom and the bride and groom and they kind of miss the perspective of all their friends coming down the mm-hmm. aisle. And they just want to tell them how hot each other look and be like, Oh my gosh, you look amazing. Or how are you feeling? Or what's going Uh, through your head right now? And so they, they get into the program and it, it, there is a bit of theater that goes into the day and and it can be a lot, but there's this big moment. And so it, it, it either is something that they love and cherish or they love the idea of like, if you do a first look, you get to take in a bit more of your guest perspectives coming. I know my best friend's watching this and she waited, she waited to tell us she walked down that aisle Mm. and it was, it was powerful. Um, and watching what she made. Oh, you know, there was bagpipes. Yeah, no. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe country music. Just kidding. Yeah. No, um, but it was actually more teary for us because yeah. we were em- embracing that moment too. So it yeah. is very powerful to yes. wait, but it is, there's always a catch. There's that powerful moment, but then you're not with your best friend. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I think that people make in their wedding planning journey is that they plan their dinner hour 
uh, in the middle of winter here in Minnesota for a summer <laughs> wedding. So like, oh, we've been eating at like 5.30, 6 o'clock. So we'll probably eat at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. And I have to go, well, okay, summer solstice yeah. is the 21st of June. Mm -hmm. And so if you're getting married on either week of those, you're getting married on the third or fourth longest weekend of daylight of yeah. the entire calendar year. Mm -hmm. So we so, tend to be cabin folk and Nordic folk in Minnesota where we run to the cabin and tend to eat a little bit later when that sun starts going down. Suddenly seven o'clock isn't an absurd time to start a dinner hour. No. You're doing that. And it all affects lighting. It affects photography. The longer the shadows, the more comfortable guests are yeah, in the day. And you have to think about if I'm doing dinner at five, five thirty, you might be doing your first dance at seven and it could be very broad daylight, bra broad daylight out. <laughs> you vision this, you know, smoky nighty yeah. first dance picture, yeah. Yeah. but it's bright at yeah. seven totally. in June 21st. Very much so. Yeah. So I'm always a fan of building that day backwards to forwards and uh, really take into account leaning into your your wedding planner that you've hired from the day to really start with mm -hmm. the dinner and the type of buffet or, or or if you're being plated all those different foods take different amounts of time mm -hmm. based off guest count to come out and so and, and it takes time to serve food everybody mm -hmm. it, it takes does. what it takes good, time. good food it takes time. what Sp no. speaking of trends <laughs> that is a, a trend i've been seeing more and more of is number one uh grooms or the partner in the relationship actually caring about more oh, as yes. we go for which is which is fanned up from style mm -hmm. and and it, like things catered to the groom more than I ever have which I think is encouraging That's one funny. of which is is uh, craft cocktails beverages and even the quality of the food because mm -hmm. people want a culinary experience on the day you remember mm -hmm. food if it's terrible and you remember if it's wonderful and then there's a lot that kind of happens right in the middle where it just wash. gets people fed right yeah, yeah. well and again every couple has has different importance on their wedding day. It could be the most important thing could be hiring a photographer mm -hmm. or it's the meal or mm -hmm. it's the dance the entertainment mm -hmm. or it's their wedding dress or yeah. the de decor yeah. mm -hmm. or it's all of it. Yes. Um, so you, that's a th conversation you have to have as a couple. What is the most important thing to you on your wedding day? Totally. And, and they the, may be different. Right. The decision making of this is it's, it's a journey. Uh, outside of like a home remodel, probably making decisions on our wedding was one of the most challenging things for us. And uh, it's some advice I give to every couple, but you tapped into the decision making and how you make mm -hmm. those calls. But my wife and I have been married 14 years and we uh, got married in Duluth. And people yes, usually you ask, did. you know, who, who, who shot your wedding as a photographer? What would the, you know, what was that thing like? And you can find me aside. I'll be glad to tell you at another podcast. Oh, we, all, we, we all have stories. Oh, we all oh, have we stories. Got a lot of stories. <laughs> but we both are very like opinionated people. And we realize like, just because you have an opinion doesn't mean you want to make the decision. Mm -hmm. And so with a couple in the middle of making decisions on your wedding day, uh, I think it's important to figure out how you go about that respectfully. Mm -hmm. And it's a, tr it's a skill and it's actually a trial that I think you get served in a beautiful way that'll take you further in life than you ever expect. And so we developed something in our wedding planning journey that we care, um, we call who cares more. And oh. so my wife and I will say, Hey, uh, let's play who cares more. And it started with DJ versus band. And uh, so I got to say, Janelle, why does it matter to you if we have a DJ over a band? And so she got to state her reasoning for that. And then she said, all right, Andrew, your turn. Who cares more? I want you to say, why does it matter for you if there's a DJ or a band? And it's going to be really obvious in that conversation that oh, someone's yes. really thought through the, the verbals and nonverbals. You're going to read it you're all. You're going to read it all. You know it's, your partner. You, right. And mm -hmm. so you get to then say, wow, babe, because you love me and us so much, I would love to give you over the power to make that decision and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Oh, and the only good. rule is the same person can't care the most about everything. Mm -hmm. And so we've used that on date nights on whether to have sushi or burgers or where to plan our next travel and things. But uh, we're like, all right, let's play who cares more. We know what that means. And it's been one of our secret sauces of figuring out how to stay married for 14 years, but it all started in our wedding planning journey. And maybe just a little mm -hmm. nugget I'll bounce pass over to anybody watching. Yeah, uh, it just... Try it out. It's It's been really great in child raising well, too. Well, this is why we're here. Your relationship relationship is insanely healthy. Oh, right. <laughs> we, we just have a lot of words. Maybe we've done some therapy. We've ah, had some work around no. it. You know, you have to have coaches in your corner at all time. It's really Good important. Good money spent. <laughs> Thanks, well, man. I think today was very successful. Thank you, Andrew Vic, for joining us today. Thank You're you welcome. so much, man. My pleasure. And of course, with all of this, we'll be publishing this on mmbride.com. So feel free to replay this or read the article recapping today's great interview with Andrew Vic. And of course, to utilize mmbride.com for any research with planning your wedding day from 
trends to educational topics, wedding planning, and of course to find the perfect wedding professional for your wedding day. They're all on there, all the wedding professionals. Uh-huh. They are good ones, <laughs> professional yeah. ones, yeah. you know, that will take great care of you, totally. like this guy right here. <laughs> As an added resource, if you guys get curious in finding a perfect venue of your choice, you can stop by our website, vicphotography.com, and our award winning blog has a tile of venues with keys of key vendors that have contributed to those venues, and you can get inspired in your planning and trying to plan the perfect wedding locally here in Minnesota. And of course, abroad. see Andrew's beautiful work as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bonus. That's a bonus. Well, that's the main thing, of yeah. course. But, Andrew um, Vick, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Andrew. Pleasure. Let's do it again soon. Yeah, that's so. great news because we're going to stay the night. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thanks, well, everybody. Well, Dan, being a client, you already got a parking spot in back. It's guaranteed. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you. Bye.